Hi, good morning, and welcome back to Creation Inspire Podcast. This is episode 407. If you're joining me live, please say hello. Let me know where you're crafting, what you're doing, if you have any questions for me, or just say hi. Hi, Sybil and Grammy. Thanks for joining live. I am at a Panera this morning, sitting down in the shade and bought some stuff to show you. Hi, Joe. Thanks for joining live. This is the last day of the school year that I have to help my friend drive their kids to school in Fort Myers. So yay, I probably don't have to go late and hang out in Fort Myers uh, anymore for the podcast. We have to be able to do stuff outside and closer to my home for the rest of the summer. So that's good. Hi, Diane and Frieza B and Jane. Thanks for joining live. Hello, Francois from France. Glad you could be here. Good morning, Jane. Hi, Margaret and Edna. Thanks for joining live. I am working on my Viviana top and I've made some great progress. Hi, Constance and Joe and Kay Beach. Glad you could be here. Happy Thursday, everybody. Let me get through this repeat and then I'll pick this up. Nice to see you, or nice to talk to you too, Francois. I look very sunshiny, Joe says. I found this dress on clearance at uh, Marshall's the other day. Marshall's is literally across the street from my house, so if I'm in the mood, I really love to just go pick through clearance over there. Jane, it's a dress, it's not even a blouse. So I'm gonna back up so you can see it. It is not buttoned down, it has just the placket to here, but then it's, let's see, it does have a shirt dress, shirt, it has a shirt detailed hem. Uh, I'm not saying that correctly. So like it comes up on the sides, it's a little lower in the back than the front, and it has a button placket on each side. So I think if you wore it long and loose, it might be really cute to open these up and have a side slit. But I think that you shouldn't do more than one thing sexy at a time. So by showing off my waist, my curve separation, I think that's enough sexy. I think, and it hikes up the length. So I think if I opened up these slits, that would be too much. But if I wore it long and loose, I think those sides would be cute. But my favorite part is the fact that it's 100% cotton woven fabric and has this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous floral print. That's my favorite part. Anyway, enough about that. I can't get over the colors. They're so pretty. So I think I'm close to being able to dye a uh, color wave for my orchid. The first bud is completely open now. The rest of them are still buds, but I see enough of the color that I'm definitely inspired to uh, dye some yarn. So I have some Be So Sporty and a Be So Sporty Bling available. So those will be the first yarns that I dye in the new orchid colorway. I haven't decided how I'm going to name it, if there'll be a little play on words or anything. It might be called Orchid Surprise or I don't know. Maybe Orchid will be in the name though. I'm really excited about the color that I got. I had no idea what it was going to be, which made it even more challenging to say I'm going to dye something. Uh, when it comes out. I'm not going to tell you yet, Barbara, because that's part of the surprise. I know, and I'm going to start dyeing to, um, and I'm going to start dyeing yarn probably tonight, today or tonight, to coordinate with the flower. It has a little variation to it, so it will be a little bit of a variegated color. It's going to be a tonal variegated color, though, not contrast. And remember when we talked about that with the color wheel? So a tonal colorway um, when you buy do you want to purge oh I always donate my clothes yes Jane um, when I have I, I don't keep clothes for much longer than a couple of seasons I buy things cheap and I donate them when I'm done with them yes that is true um, especially since I have to style things for my books and my patterns and my website and things like that it means that I do need to uh, change up my clothes pretty often, so I try to keep them cheap. I try to keep them from my Amazon shop or clearance on Marshalls, and that way I have things to style my knit and crochet wear and my yarns with. 
I love donating anyway, so I do a lot of donations to the women's shelter here in Southwest Florida already, and so I do donate my clothes there as well. And I have a great blog post about things you can donate to a woman's shelter that you can buy to donate to women's shelters too. And you can find that article on my blog, but I'll post the link in the video description today because you'd be amazed at all the things that they need that you wouldn't think that they need. And that's another reason why I go to Marshalls and look through the clearance section sometimes, often, um, is because if I can find bras and underwear that are new, um, but on clearance, I'll, I don't care what size they are, they're part of my donations to the woman's shelter. But there's a, I have a great article on it with lots of items that you can constantly look for when you're looking through clearance sections. Um, hi Leanne, glad you could be here. Does anybody have any specific questions for me before I move on? To, oh, I was going to show you this too. Got distracted by my dress. I'm so in love with this print, it's not even funny. So, here we go. Here's so much of my top I have done now. So definitely making progress. Uh, speaking of which, I've received several questions and comments recently about substituting yarns and substituting different yarns for different projects. Specifically, two questions that have come up recently are substituting my organic cotton yarn for my linen yarn and substituting my organic cotton yarn for my sporty bling yarn. And the questions came up about, so the organic cotton is a totally different hand, a totally different feel than those other two yarns. And it um, is a different fiber, right? All three of those yarns are different fibers. So how they are reacting with water is going to be greatly different as well. When you are substituting yarns, it is a whole process. It's not just, oh, let's see if this works out. If you want it to be successful, there are a lot of things you need to consider. Um, if you want a project to turn out exactly the way the project turns out from the designer or from the company that you first fall in love with the yarn or the pattern, your best bet is to do exactly the same thing. The same yarn, the same gauge. When I say same gauge, I don't mean the same needle dies or crochet hook size. I mean the same gauge because everybody has different tension. So you want to make sure your gauge swatch is exactly the same to the original pattern or your garment is not going to turn out the same size. Uh, having said that, if you have liked the way some, the texture of something and you like the way something feels, you need to use the same kind of fiber to get that same hand, that same feel and texture. You change fiber content, you change the shine, the sheen, the softness, the halo, the texture, the rigidity. Um, you change all sorts of things when, uh, or the drape. R rigidity and drape I mean because if you're doing a hat, you want something with structure. If you're doing a shawl, you want something with drape. So, Depending, there's a lot of variables when switching yarns, but one of the most important parts is how it's affected by water. First of all, we're making things that we're going to wear. They need to be washed eventually, if not right away, after you've worn it a couple of times or one time. So to do a gauge swatch and not wash that gauge swatch, see how it's affected by water, will mean that you don't know what your true gauge is. Your gauge might look just like this, right off the hook, right off the needle, but if you haven't seen what it looks like when it's affected by water, after the first time you wash it, it may be twice this size. So skipping that step can be absolutely disastrous for uh, making garments. When you're making shawls or scarves or things that, or blankets that you don't care, thing, that it's mandatory, but if you choose to not do a gauge swatch and choose not to wash the gauge swatch before measuring, um, you run a very high risk of not making a garment that fits. And it's a lot of time and energy put into making a garment. And so if you want it to fit, this is, these are the best practices to be successful the first time around. So 
I know not everybody likes to hear that subject, but I've got enough comments about it, questions about it recently, that I figured it was a good time to mention a little bit about gauge swatches again. And substituting yarns, and especially water. Water is a biggie. Does anybody have any questions about that? I haven't seen a whole lot of comments through that. Hi, Marsha. Thanks for joining live. I'll go back to knitting and uh, see if I can see any comments. Yes, Judy, I was waiting for someone to recognize. I have my heart necklace back on this morning. In fact, I purposely didn't say anything to see who, uh, if anyone was going to recognize it. I finally, I could not get uh, the necklace fixed. The original necklace has broken so many times over the years, and I've gone back to the jeweler to get it fixed a few times. And the last time they did fix it, just wasn't really happy with the whole experience. So I've been hesitant to go back, and I ended up just buying um, a silver necklace on Amazon. So it's not a matching necklace to the charm anymore, but um, I changed it up. So I have, it's just an 18 inch, really fine silver uh, necklace, but I have my original heart charm, which is the most important part of the gift anyway. Uh, so yeah, so I have my, I have my necklace back, yay! You probably won't see me take it off anytime soon now. <laughs> I like having it back. It does change the way I wear earrings though. I, I feel obligated to wear silver earrings because of the silver necklace, but I still mix it up because I love gold so much. And someone mentioned my earrings this morning. I'm wearing the Kelly earrings again today from 80 Handmaid's 80 Handmade Gifts book. But these ones are done in Be So Fine Bling, not Be So Fine. And you can see that gorgeous silver thread. So some people are having connectivity issues again this morning. Uh, might be on your end, might be on YouTube's end. I know it can't be uh, my location because I am in the heart of the city right now. So I definitely have cellular service. Christine mixes her jewelry with uh, gold and silver. Uh, yeah, I try to too. It, I think all metals look good together. Yeah, Leanne, it's okay to substituting yarn works. That was the whole point of the conversation is to let you know substituting yarn works, but it's a process. It doesn't just work willy nilly. You have to consider a lot of things and make choices and make alteration based alterations based on the already someone says swatching and washing la 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 I don't want to hear it that's fine but if you don't make garments it doesn't matter either but when you're making garments and you the fit it really is important I mean I don't know about you but I've made things and spent a whole lot of time on them and then they didn't fit and had to unravel the whole thing or throw it out that's a bigger waste in my opinion than the few minutes it takes to do the swatch in the first place but that's because I want things to fit. But if you don't make garments, it doesn't matter at all. So then you can go, la 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 la. <laughs> How do you wash the Serena hat? Uh, you wash it by hand. No reason, you can wash that one too. Hi Anna, thanks for joining live. Hi Lynn, hi Lisa. Does anybody have any other questions about that? Hi Lydia. That naughty, naughty little skein. Pat, good morning. Got this bunch of names. Ooh, I like this song. Hi, Adriac and Lydia. Okay, somebody yesterday talked to me, um, asked a question about mixing and matching. Hi, Marissa, thanks for joining live. About mixing and matching colors of Be So Baby yarn for a baby gift when you don't know the sex of the baby. And so a couple things I wanted to mention first because I'm in that same boat right now. And I think there's a couple of things you can do before you um, wing it and just mix colors together, which you can totally do because a baby and even a new mom, they don't want everything to match their theme every day of their life. So if you have 
some story or inspiration to do a color set. It doesn't have to be in the baby shower or the baby room theme because once they're in real life, they change colors every day, right? We all have our colors that we love, but we wear different colors every day. So don't get too hung up on it. However, if you want to match the colors of the baby theme, and uh, I first thing I would do is check the gift registry. If the shower hasn't happened yet and you're looking at the gift registry, chances are you're going to pick up on the vibe of the colors by the things that they've bought, for the, uh, that they've chosen for the room. That's where I would start. Hi Izzy, Exotic Earth Elements, good morning, thanks for joining live. The next thing I would go to is someone you know next to the mom-to-be, just in case you don't feel like crying. Uh, if Especially if they're doing a gender reveal, you want them to feel pressured to answer questions to you. Um, lots of fast questions. I'm not catching all of them. So if you uh, if you want or if your question is really important and I miss it today, please come back to the podcast after it's over when it's gone to a recorded version and leave your comment there because I get notified about them all day and I have the ability to answer your questions still there. So please feel welcome to do that no harm in asking a second time. It's just they go by so fast here in the morning, I don't always see them. Um, okay, so what was I gonna say? Okay, so I would start with the gift registry and try to pick up a vibe on the colors. I would ask whoever you know close to the mom to be, if you know her mother, if you know her best friend, I would go to them next. And then if you feel comfortable asking the mom to be, ask her, because she may tell you what she wants and it may have nothing to do with blue or pink and it just make sure that you talk to them in a way where you don't feel like you're pressuring them for the gender reveal because if they're waiting to do it they don't want to hear any pressure from anybody about that so having said all that uh hi sheree hi jill thanks for joining live there are still lots of color combinations you can do that aren't gender specific. And obviously there are that are gender specific because not everybody does the mysterious gender reveal parties. So if not, then you can do all sorts of things. But you don't have to do all baby pink and all baby blue to do even a gender specific. There's all sorts of ways to mix and match colors. So I'm gonna pull all of the balls out and then I'll tip the camera down a little bit so you can see the table. I've got 15 colors in Be So Baby yarn. It's a DK weight, 100% milk fiber yarn. DK weight works out really quickly. It's just a little bit thinner than worsted weight, so you can make things relatively quick, quickly with this. Uh, I have a baby shower in about a month, a little over a month, and it's going to be a gender reveal party, so I have no idea uh, what the sex of the babies. So my next step is to go to the gift registry as soon as I know it's open. And I, um, and then from there, if I have trouble still, I'm going to talk to the mom-to-be's mother, who is one of my best friends. So we, I will go from there and I will keep you posted on what I do and what I decide. And I'm sure there will be a pattern for whatever I design at that point. So I'm gonna tip the camera down a little bit here so we can see all the colors. And I'm just going to go through all of them first so you can see all of the colors. Start with the pinks. This is Princess, which is your traditional baby pink. Thanks, Cherie. It's a dress. If you watch the later version of the podcast, I stood up and showed that the whole thing is a dress. It's so cute. I got it at Marshall's on clearance yesterday. This is Orchid Pink, which has a little, like, tint of purple to it. It's a little more of a purpley pink. And here's Diva, which is a bright raspberry. Those are the pinks. Yeah. And then we have peach. And this is cherry, which is a traditional red. And then we have violet, which is a very violet plum kind of a purple, which runs into, which is a, a red purple, right? There are purples that go into blues and then there are uh, purples that go in the red. This would be more of a traditional purple that goes to the red side, like a royal purple. Okay, and then here's some of our neutral colors. We've got Buttercup, which is a pale yellow. Mint, some mint green. And then 
Snowflake. You can't go wrong with Snowflake. Snowflake is a pure white. This is not an off-white or a cream. That is a pure white. You can't go wrong with doing a baby ensemble in Snowflake. And you know, if you did the bulk of the work in Snowflake and then just held off on doing the the trim work in whatever color you ended up doing, whether it was for the baby theme or the gender reveal. Oh, I forgot to say this was our other neutral. This is platinum, which is a medium to light silver gray. Really beautiful neutral with some of the pastels. And then we've got our blues and green. This is navy, which is definitely a traditional navy. Prince, which is a traditional baby blue. You're going to do a traditional baby blue uh, outfit. This is Clover, which is a bright emerald green. And then we have Splash, which is like aqua, and Turquoise, which is runs a little more green. So these are the two blue-green colors, but they this one runs more green. That's Turquoise, and this one runs more blue. That's um, aqua. Now, does anybody want to see any particular colors mixed together? Or I will show you some of the ways that I've mixed them up in the past. So I've done like a beachy vibe where I've picked turquoise splash um, prints with platinum and snowflake. These are beautiful together. And um, I think that that would be a really beautiful beachy theme for a baby. And I don't think it would necessarily have to be boy or girl if you're going to go with a beachy theme. Uh, what is the yardage? It is, I don't have that number off the top of my head. All of this is listed on my website if you want to go back and read that too. These are 50 gram balls and 142 yards of number three DK weight yarn. And it's 100% milk fiber, machine washable and dryable and super, super soft. One of the other combinations that I've done is Peach Diva Orchid, Plum, and Princess. Someone's asking for Orchid, Peach, and Plum. Yeah, Orchid, Peach, and Plum. Absolutely gorgeous together. Coral and Turquoise. Okay, we'll do Peach and Turquoise. Yes, absolutely gorgeous. Very Art Deco Miami. Love, love, love that. Who else has requests? As you come up with them, I will put them together. And in the meantime, I'll just keep doing some of the things that I like. I did pick traditional colors for red, white, and blue. If anybody is interested in doing anything patriotic, uh, this would be great for 4th of July or just any type of a patriotic uh, American flag. If you're American, if you're not American, you could definitely pick your country's colors through these. have quite a few of the primaries as well as a lot of brights. Um, hi, Pat. Okay, so we're going to go, okay. And then for if you are someone interested in Christmas colors, the, core, uh, the clover and the cherry work very nice for Christmas as well. And even adding snowflake in there is very traditional too. Um, Becky, I don't know what your question is, but if you want to ask it, that is totally fine. And then let's not forget the rainbow baby Afghan project that it did, the rainbow connection. Absolutely wonderful for a baby if you don't know the gender because who doesn't love rainbow? So for that one we did I think we did orchid, peach, turquoise. No, I think then we did buttercup, turquoise. Ah, am I going to make it? I might make I put them out. Yeah, here we go. And then uh, splash and plum. And you can see that whole baby set on my website as well as, uh, as a, is it a video series yet? No, it's not a video series yet on YouTube. But the whole pattern set with written instructions and uh, charts is available on my website. And so I think that this would be a fabulous selection if you're doing, uh, if you're doing something for a gender reveal baby shower and you're not going to know the sex beforehand. There's nothing wrong with Rainbow. Rainbow works for everybody and everything. Buttercup, navy, and mint. Okay. Whoopsie. Buttercup. Navy and mint. Yes, very pretty. Very pretty and very classic. Yes. Hi, Tina. Thanks for joining live. 
Another thing that I think is pretty is adding platinum to any of the colors. Yes, it is extremely soft. I think platinum and even white is a great mix with any of the pastels. So they look, I'm going to show you a couple versions of that. So there it is with peach. Imagine doing a chevron stripe with any of these. So you would do a chevron stripe in the uh, platinum and the snowflake and any one of these colors it would be so pretty. That's with Diva. I haven't been saying them, sorry. This is Violet, and that one was Flash, and Turquoise. I mean, it looks good with all of them, though. There really isn't a bad combination with the uh, Platinum and, uh, and uh, Snowflake. You can get all of the colors. I do have a sampler box available that's on discount. So if you want a box of all 15 uh, colors, uh, I've bought the whole box. Uh, oh, good, Lisa. It's a great, it's, it comes at a discount. It's a great way to get all of the colors. You can figure mix and match colors for yourself. And then from there, um, order more. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions? Or if you want me to lift up any of the other colors, I can still do that too. It's easier to read your comments this way. I love them all too, Lisa. Thank you. It's so much fun being with that. I just love color so much. <laughs> oh, that's always an excuse to buy more yarn, Tina. Yeah, but the sampler box is like $10 off the regular price of buying all 15 balls. So you get a discount and then you have all 15 colors. And if you keep those separate from your projects, then you can always have them sitting there and know for sure which colors are gonna go together for whatever then you're trying to match or whatever theme you're going for. Even if you've picked up a little gift from the gift registry and then are matching it from there. Uh, no, it's not fuzzy. No, not fuzzy at all. It's wide. It's very smooth. Does that show up well? I don't think that that's fuzzy. I mean, it is yarn, but um, it doesn't have a halo or a lot of fuzz in it. No. Especially if you did like a good solid gauge, I think you'd be totally fine for a baby. Some things you would want to consider omitting if you are worried about choking hazards. If you're not and you're confident in your skills, buttons, bobbles, anything that can come off, you want to be really careful. Beads, you want to be really careful with things like that. Um, if you're not confident in your sewing skills and tacking things down, just skip that part. I would, um, I would definitely consider skipping that for babies. Um, but yeah, the yarn is absolutely fantastic for baby projects. And home deck, I've done mandalas so far, I've done afghans. It's super, super soft and has a beautiful, uh, beautiful bright sheen to it. Any other questions? Lots of great questions today. No. All right, well, if there aren't any more questions, I'll wait a second here. And then we'll do, I'll wait to see who wants to pick a number between one and five today. The first number I see, uh, I will pick one of my Create, Share, Inspire notebooks from one through five, and I will randomly pick a quote out of there, and we'll talk about it and see what it means to us today. I'm looking for a number between one and five. All right, Robin said three. So we will go with three. Ah, it's the one on top. Okay. Oh, if someone wants to see my earrings closer. Sure, these are the Kelly earrings from Any Handy Gifts book. It's a fantastic pattern, so easy to make, and they get stretched onto a hoop earring, simple hoop earring, they take five minutes to make. Everybody loves them. They make great gifts. You can make them in all different colors for your wardrobe. I wear them almost every day, as you are, those of you who join my podcast regularly are well aware. Uh, they're super, they're big, and you get that big, bold look, but they're light. So if you have stretched out earlobes, which I do, um, I can't wear heavy earrings anymore, but I still like big, bold earrings. So anything that, that involves crochet for the uh, size of it, is a great way to still be able to wear big bold earrings. Okay, so let's randomly 
Oh, always get compliments. And you know what? Compliments are the ability to start a conversation with a stranger, right? I dress a little on the bright side. I, dr I, try, to, I try to look a little on the bubbly side and it always ends up striking up conversation with the strangest of people sometimes. And I think it's a great way to be able to receive someone's comment and thank them for their bravery for speaking to a stranger and give them positive reinforcement for talking to a stranger. So anything I can do to be a little on the bright and colorful side, I feel like it's an opportunity to spread kindness to strangers. So anyway, that's just me. So let's flip the uh, randomly and see what we find. Oh, this is so good. All right. This is by Arthur Conan Doyle. We can't command our love, but we can our actions. Isn't that great? I mean, sometimes we can't control who we love, or sometimes we love more or less than we want to because the heart wants what the heart wants, right? But we can always control our actions. I love this so much. I think that by being proud of your actions, I think it can make you more loving and also make you more lovable too. <laughs> so I do think that it works all the way around. We cannot command our love, but we can our actions. There's so much power and, and empowerment and having control and being aware that you have control of your actions. I think it's one of the most empowering things in the world. I wake up every morning and I choose to be the best person I can be because you know what? Because I can. I love having that choice and that empowers me every single day. So this is by Arthur Conan Doyle. We can love, but we can our actions. Ooh, love it. Well, thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed my show and tells. I hope you enjoyed my little demo and our talk about gauge and swatching. Even la 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 la. It's still good to talk about it. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today.